Table of Contents St. Petersburg Dr. Sidney Sokloff 2020 Dr. Sidney at Earthlink.net St. Petersburg is the second largest city of Russia and one of the world's major cities. St. Petersburg has played a vital role in Russian history for two centuries. From 1712 to 1914, it was the capital of the Russian Empire. St. Petersburg is St. Petersburg in Russian. It was formerly called Petrograd from 1914 to 1924, and Leningrad from 1924 to 1991. Russia is a huge country. In fact the largest in area in the world. The distance from St. Petersburg on the west to Vladivostok on the Pacific Ocean on the east is 4,071 miles or 6,550 kilometers. Russia extends from Europe to Asia. The dividing line between European Russia and Asian Russia is generally considered to be the Ural Mountains. The northern and western parts of Asiatic Russia is the frigid region known as Siberia. Where is St. Petersburg? St. Petersburg is in the far western part of Russia. Here is St. Petersburg. We see that it is very close to Finland and the Baltic countries of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. With St. Petersburg, Russia has access to the Baltic Sea all year round, and thence to the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. St. Petersburg is connected to the Baltic Sea by the Gulf of Finland. From St. Petersburg to Helsinki, Finland is only 190 miles. 304 kilometers and to Tallinn Estonia is only 200 miles or 320 kilometers from St Petersburg to Stockholm Sweden is 433 miles or 700 kilometers from St Petersburg to Moscow is 395 miles 635 kilometers now about the founder of this great city, Peter the Great. The story of the great city of St. Petersburg starts with Peter I, Tsar of all the Russians. Peter Alexeyevich Romanov, Tsar Peter I, usually known as Peter the Great, was born in 1672 in Moscow. Peter was the son of Tsar Alexis and the grandson of the Tsar Michael Romanov. Michael Romanov was chosen to be a Tsar in 1613, and thus started the Romanov dynasty. The word Tsar for Emperor derives from Caesar, as does the word Kaiser for the former Emperor of Germany until 1918. In 1682, at the age of 10, Peter was proclaimed Tsar. At that time Russia was a very backward country. Peter's lifelong goal was to modernize Russia. For that he had to open Russian up to the West. In the 17th century, transportation and communication by land routes was very difficult. The only practical way to do that was by sea. Peter invited the best European engineers, shipbuilders, architects, craftsmen and merchants to come to Russia. Hundreds of Russians were sent to Europe to get the best education and learn different arts and crafts. Peter himself went to Holland and studied all aspects of shipbuilding. Meanwhile, Peter continued his political and economic reforms. He reorganized the government and established the Duma, or Senate as the highest government institution. Peter established an active foreign policy and boosted national manufacturing and trade. He organized a Russian regular army and built the Russian navy. 
This shows the expansion of Russia under Peter the Great. At the beginning of his reign, Russia occupied a vast territory some 4,000 miles in extent. However, access to the west was blocked by Sweden in the north and the Ottoman Empire in the south. The Ottoman Empire in the south occupied the shores of the Black Sea and also controlled passage to the Mediterranean Sea though the Straits of the Dardanelles. Here are the Swedish possessions in the Baltic area in 1700. We see that Sweden blocked Russia's access to the Baltic Sea. At that time Finland was a Swedish possession. The Swedish possessions also included all of the areas of the present countries of Estonia, Island, and Latvia, Livland. The Swedish possession also included a small, but vital part of present-day Russia, that provided access to the Baltic Sea via the Gulf of Finland. In 1700 Peter picked a fight with Sweden known as the Great Northern War to gain access to the Gulf of Finland and the Baltic Sea. The Russians punched a hole through Swedish territory to the Baltic. And St. Petersburg was founded in 1703 in the Neva River Delta. Peter the Great named the new city after his patron saint. The Apostle Saint Peter. The site chosen for Saint Petersburg was the marshy delta of the Neva River where it enters the Gulf of Finland. At the end of the war Russia was victorious and conquered the vast lands on the Baltic coast. Russia gained access to European trade and Saint Petersburg became her major seaport. In 1712, Peter the Great moved the Russian capital 400 miles from Moscow to St. Petersburg and continued paying special attention to the swift construction of the city, his European paradise. When the Northern War ended in 1721, Russia was declared an empire. In celebration of Peter's triumph, the Duma changed Peter's title and he became Tsar of all the Russias. There are many monuments to Peter the Great in St. Petersburg, including the Bronze Horseman. Peter the Great lived in this cabin during the initial construction of St. Petersburg. It is now housed in a museum. The first residential building to be built in the new city of St. Petersburg was a wooden house for Tsar Peter. Tsar Peter lived in this house between 1703 and 1708, and the living room, bedroom and study are still filled with Peter's original belongings. Peter wanted all the houses of his new city to be built of stone, the way it was done in Europe. But he could not afford a stone house at the time. So he ordered the walls to be painted as if the house was made of bricks. In 1703, the St. Petersburg Fortress, known as the Peter and Paul Fortress, was founded. This is the Peter and Paul Fortress, where St. Petersburg was founded. The spire of the Peter and Paul Cathedral is still one of the highest points in the city. In 1714, both the Summer Palace and Winter Palace were built. Peter's daughter became the Empress Elizabeth Petrovna. In 1724, in 1762, Catherine the Great assumed power after a coup d'état. During the reign of Alexander I, the Russian army successfully stopped Napoleon's invasion of Russia in 1812 and drove the French army back to Paris. Factories and plants, both Russian and foreign, grew rapidly in the period, 1840-1890. Nevsky Prospect and downtown streets filled with banks and company offices in the 1840s to 1890s. Construction boomed, and apartment buildings spread all over the city in the 1890s. In 1905 to 1907, revolutions were suppressed with large civilian casualties. In 1906, the Duma, 
The Russian Parliament opened. World War I began in 1914. Russia was allied with Britain, France, and Italy. This was against the central powers of Germany and Austria-Hungary. The name of St. Petersburg with the Germanic Berg was changed to the more Russian name of Petrograd, meaning Peter's city. World War I went very poorly for Russia. The revolution in February 1917 resulted in the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II. This is the front of the cruiser Aurora, anchored in the Balshyanevka River, and the Troitsky, Trinity, bridge crossing the Nevar River. Beyond it is the dome of St. Isaac's Cathedral. The Winter Palace was then the residence of the democratic, but largely inefficient provisional government of Alexander Kerensky. Most of the ministers of the provisional government were arrested, and the 73-year-long communist rule began. In 1918, German troops were approaching close to Petrograd, so the Bolshevik government of Vladimir Lenin decided to move the capital to Moscow, which was still far from the front. Lenin died in 1924, and the name of the city was changed to Leningrad. Germany invaded Russia on June 22, 1941. On September 8, 1941, German troops encircled Leningrad and the long siege began. The siege lasted for 900 days, from September 8, 1941 until January 27, 1944. Around 200,000 people died of cold and starvation in Leningrad during the siege. Several hundred thousand people were evacuated from Leningrad across Lake Klodiga via the famous Road of Life, Doroga Zizny. This was the only route that connected the besieged city with the mainland. During the warm season people were ferried to the mainland, and in winter carried by trucks that drove across the frozen Lake Lodaga under constant enemy bombardment. In 1991, and with the breakup of the Soviet Union, the name of the city was changed from Leningrad back to its original name. St. Petersburg. How big is St. Petersburg? Today, St. Petersburg is Russia's second largest city with a population of 5 million. It is the third largest city in Europe. Here is the population of the 11 largest cities of Europe, not including the suburban areas. We see that St. Petersburg is in third place with a population of 5 million. Moscow is the largest city in Europe with 12 million. However, when we look at metropolitan areas in Europe, we see that St. Petersburg now falls to 9th place, with a metropolitan area population of 5.6 million. Moscow is still the leading city with a metropolitan area population of 14.5 million. This shows the population growth of St. Petersburg. There was a very pronounced dip in the population in the 1920s, after the Bolshevik Revolution, and the removal of the capital to Moscow. There was also a large dip in the population during the Siege of Leningrad during World War II. St. Petersburg is the northernmost city in the world with over one million people. For over 200 years, St. Petersburg has been the political and cultural center of Russia. It is impressive even today, and people often call it the capital of the north. The many canals and waterways have also earned St. Petersburg the nickname Venice of the North. This is one of St. Petersburg's many canals. Architecturally, St. Petersburg ranks as one of the most splendid and harmonious cities of Europe. 
The city center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The economy of St. Petersburg St. Petersburg is a leader in the production of modern heavy machinery and equipment, including turbines, turbo generators, and nuclear powered equipment. St. Petersburg's shipyards produce large capacity tankers, fish processing ships, and nuclear propelled icebreakers. Other products include tractors and subway cars laboratory instruments, and clothing. St. Petersburg was founded by Peter the Great to be the major year-round seaport for Russia. It still retains the troll. Here are the bulk cargo tonnages for the leading Baltic seaports. St. Petersburg is the leading container port in the Baltic. Here is the container traffic for the major Baltic ports in thousands of units. Because of St. Petersburg's northerly location, winter nights are long. A special feature of St. Petersburg summers, however, is the period of white nights in late June. Because the city is so close to the Arctic Circle. Only a brief period of twilight intervenes between sunset and sunrise. The longest day is 17 hours, 31 minutes on June 21. The sun rises at 4.43 a.m. and sets at 10.20 p.m. The shortest day is less than 7 hours long on December 22. The sun rises at 9 a.m. and sets at 3.57 p.m. Winters are long and dark with just 7 hours of daylight on December 21st, compared to 17 and 1 half hours of daylight on June 21st, in midsummer. Twilight lasts to about 1 a.m. in the morning, and there is only 2 hours of darkness. What time is it in St. Petersburg? Here are the time zones of the world, and the time in various places in terms of standard time, not daylight savings time. Here are the European time zones. St. Petersburg, as is most of European Russia is GMT plus 3, which is 3 hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. When it's 12 noon in London, it is 3 p.m. in St. Petersburg. When it's 12 noon in London, it is 1 p.m. in Berlin, and 2 p.m. in Helsinki, Finland. St. Petersburg. The setting. St. Petersburg is located on the delta of the Neva River, at the head of the Gulf of Finland. St. Petersburg extends across nearly 40 to islands of the delta and across adjacent parts of the mainland floodplain. The Gulf of Finland is only about 10 miles wide at this point. The very low and originally marshy site has made the city subject to recurrent flooding, especially in the fall, when strong winds drive gulf waters upstream and also at the time of the spring thaw. The Nevar River is only 46 miles or 74 kilometers long. It starts at Lake Lodriga to the east of St. Petersburg, and then flows westward to the Gulf of Finland and the Baltic Sea. St. Petersburg is connected through a series of rivers, lakes, and canals to Moscow, and through the Volga River to the Black Sea. St. Petersburg Orientation Here is a view of the St. Petersburg region. The River Neva curves around St. Petersburg in a general loop, and then divides into the Bolshaya, or Greater, Neva and the Mulia, or Smaller, Neva, and then enters the Gulf of Finland. The main points of interest in St. Petersburg are in this general area near the Neva River and the Nevsky Prospect. In the vicinity of St. Petersburg are the royal palaces at Peterhof and Zarkoselo, 
also known as Pushkin. Across the Neva from the central part of St. Petersburg is Vasilevsky Island, Anna Peter and Paul Fortress. Here is the central part of St. Petersburg. Note the many canals and bridges. The main thoroughfare is Nevsky Prospect. St. Petersburg Scenes We will start off with perhaps the greatest points of interest in all of St. Petersburg, the Winter Palace, and the Hermitage Museum. The Winter Palace and the Hermitage Museum. The Winter Palace was built between 1754 and 1762 as the winter residence of the Tsars. The Baroque style. Green and White Palace has an amazing 1,786 doors and 1,945 windows. Catherine the Great was its first royal occupant. The Winter Palace is now part of a group of magnificent buildings that is called the State Hermitage Museum, which holds one of the world's greatest collections of art. Here is the Winter Palace. Part of the Hermitage Museum is housed within the Winter Palace. The Palace Square Next to the Winter Palace and at the end of Nevsky Prospect is the central city square of St. Petersburg and of the former Russian Empire. This is the Winter Palace as seen from the Palace Square. This is the Palace Square and General Staff Building. The Palace Square was the setting of many events of worldwide significance, including the Bloody Sunday Demonstration of 1905 and the October Revolution of 1917. This is a view of the Palace Square, with the Winter Palace and the General Staff Building, and the Alexander Column in the middle. This is the General Staff Building and Palace Square. Here is the Palace Square, and the Alexander Column in the square. Here facing the Neva River, are the Winter Palace, and the Hermitage Museum. The Alexander Column, erected in 1834, is a red granite column, the tallest of its kind in the world. The Alexander Column is a monument to the Russian military victory in the war with Napoleon's France. The column was named for Tsar Alexander I, who ruled Russia between 1801 and 1825 during the Napoleonic Wars. This is a view from across the Neva River of the very extensive Hermitage Museum complex, part of which is in the Winter Palace. This a view of the Winter Palace and Neva River. This is a view inside the Hermitage Museum. This is another view inside the Hermitage Museum. This is another view inside the Hermitage Museum. The Peter and Paul Fortress was established by Peter the Great in 1703. On a small island, Siachi, meaning hare, Ostrov, in the Neva River. Built during the Northern War, the fort was never actually needed. The fort was completed with six bastions in earth and timber within a year. It was rebuilt with stone between 1706 and 1740. The Peter and Paul Fortress is across the Neva from the Winter Palace. It contains a number of buildings, including the Peter and Paul Cathedral. The Peter and Paul Fortress is the original citadel of St. Petersburg. Founded in 1703. From around 1720, the fort served as a base for the city garrison and also as a prison for high ranking or political prisoners. The True Betskoy Bastion, built in the 1870s, became the main prison block. The cathedral built in 1712 and 1733 has a 123-meter bell tower and a gilded angel-topped cupola. This is the Peter and Paul Cathedral.
This is the interior of the Peter and Paul Cathedral. All Russian Tsars from Peter I to Nicholas II and his family are buried in the Peter and Paul Cathedral. Other structures in the Peter and Paul Fortress include the Mint Building, the Trubetskoy Bastion, the Grand Ducal Crypt, and the City Museum. The Admiralty is next to the Winter Palace along the Neva River. The original Admiralty was one of the first structures to be built in St. Petersburg. It was designed to be a dockyard, where some of the first ships of Russia's Baltic fleet were built, some with the participation of Tsar Peter himself who was an expert in shipbuilding. The Admiralty was also fortified to be an extra defense for the newly acquired territory of the Neva Delta. The Admiralty building we see today was built between 1806 and 1823. The equestrian statue of Peter the Great is popularly known as the Bronze Horseman. The Bronze Horseman is along the Neva downstream from the Admiralty and behind St. Isaac's Cathedral. This is the Bronze Horseman, with St. Isaac's Cathedral in the background. St. Isaac's Cathedral is the largest cathedral in St. Petersburg and was the largest church in Russia when it was built. Its dome reaches 101 meters in height. St. Isaac's Cathedral is very close to the Admiralty. It was dedicated to St. Isaac of Dalmatia, a patron saint of Peter the Great, who had been born on the feast day of that saint. It took 40 years to construct St. Isaac's Cathedral. Under the Soviet Russian government, St. Isaac's Cathedral was abandoned, then turned into a museum of atheism. Alexander II Nikolovich was the Tsar of Russia from 1855 until his assassination in 1881. He was also the Grand Duke of Finland. The Church of the Savior of the Spilt Blood or more formally the Church of the Resurrection of Christ, was built on the spot where Tsar Alexander II was assassinated in 1881. The Church of the Savior of the Spilt Blood is a short distance north of the Nevsky Prospect. The church was built in 1883 to 1907 and officially called the Church of the Resurrection of Christ. Ironically, despite the church's Russian appearance, its main architect was not Russian. The double-headed eagle is the symbol of the Tsars. Both inside and outside, the church is decorated with mosaics, designed by the most prominent Russian artists of the time. Tsarskoe Selo is outside of St. Petersburg. Tsarskoe Selo may be translated as Tsar's village. It is a former Russian residence of the royal family and visiting nobility. Tsarsko Selo, or Pushkin, is 15 miles, or 24 kilometers south of St. Petersburg. Peter the Great gave this great estate to his wife, Catherine, as a present in 1708. Currently, there are two imperial palaces in Tsarsko Selo. The Baroque Catherine Palace, with the adjacent Catherine Park, and the neoclassical Alexander Palace, with the adjacent Alexander Park. The Alexander Palace was commissioned by Catherine the Great for her favorite grandson and future emperor, Alexander I. The Alexander Palace is primarily remembered as the favorite residence of the last Russian emperor. Nicholas II and his family. The imperial family was under house arrest at the Alexander Palace in the spring of 1917 before they were moved to Siberia. Catherine started to develop Sarsko Selo as a royal country house, building the first Catherine Palace. The Catherine Palace became the summer residence of the Russian Tsars. 
The Catherine Palace was built in 1756 in Zarsko Selo. The Catherine Palace was famous for its lavish exterior. More than 100 kilograms of gold were used to gild the sophisticated stucco facade and the numerous statues erected on the roof. It was even rumored that the palace's roof was constructed entirely of gold. The palace is best known for its grand suits of formal rooms known as the Golden Inflade. The palace also has many distinctively decorated smaller rooms, including the reproduced Amber Room. This replaces the original Amber Room destroyed by the Nazis when they occupied the region in 1941. Tsarskoye Selo escaped the 19th century industrialization. Although it was between here and St. Petersburg that the first Russian railroad was built in 1837. It was also known for its powerful government radio station that was set up here in 1917. Tsarsko Selo was renamed Pushkin by the Bolsheviks in 1937. Peterhof, or Peterhof, was originally Peterhof, Dutch for Peter's Court. It is a series of palaces and gardens laid out in the orders of Peter the Great, and sometimes called the Russian Versailles. Peterhof is located about 15 miles, or 24 kilometers west of St. Petersburg, overlooking the Gulf of Finland. The same name also refers to the adjacent town of 82,000 people. The Palace Ensemble and the city center are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Great Palace is the largest of the palaces in Peterhof. This is a view of the Great Palace from the Lower Garden. The Grand Cascade is modeled on one constructed for King Louis XIV. It is Chateau de Marly. The Great Palace overlooks the Gulf of Finland. Here are the upper and lower gardens. And the Samson Canal, or Sea Channel, connecting the Great Palace to the Gulf of Finland. The water from the fountains of the Grand Cascade flow into a semicircular pool, and then into the Samson Canal to the Gulf of Finland. Here is a view of Samson Fountain and Sea Channel, looking toward the Gulf of Finland. This is the Grand Cascade with the statue of Samson. The large Samson Fountain depicts the moment when Samson tears open the jaws of a lion representing Russia's victory over Sweden in the Great Northern War. Perhaps the greatest technological achievement of Peter Off is that all of the fountains operate without the use of pumps. Water is supplied from national springs and collects in reservoirs in the upper gardens. The elevation difference creates the pressure that drives most of the fountains of the lower gardens, including the Grand Cascade. The Samson Fountain is supplied by a special aqueduct, over 4 kilometers in length, drawing water and pressure from a high elevation source. This is the East Chapel in the interior of Peterhof. This is a view of the interior of Peterhof. The Summer Palace of Peter the Great the relatively small summer house was built in the Baroque style for Tsar Peter the Great in 1710-1714, and is one of the oldest structures in the city. Here is Summer Palace and Summer Garden of Peter the Great along the Neva. This is the Summer Palace in 1900. This palace is surprisingly modest by Russian imperial standards and contains just 14 main rooms. The palace is now a museum, and both the house and the adjacent summer garden are open to the public. This is the Summer Palace Elizabeth. The most famous street in Russia and most important street in St. Petersburg is the Nevsky Prospect. And our main axis of reference for St. Petersburg 
when St. Petersburg was first laid out. These three main avenues were planned to converge on Palace Square. Of the three, the Nevsky Prospect is by far the most prominent and spectacular. And most of the points of interest in St. Petersburg are on or near Nevsky Prospect. Nevsky Prospect stretches for 3 miles or 4.5 kilometers and is renowned for its splendid architecture and famous former patrons like Tchaikovsky, Gogol, Rimsky Korsakov, and Nizhansky. Today it is the heart of the city. The Nevsky Prospect was planned by Peter the Great as the beginning of the road from his palace to Novgorod and then on to Moscow. This is the Nevsky Prospect in 1900. This is another view of the Nevsky Prospect in 1900. This is the Nevsky Prospect near the Anichka Palace in 1905. This is the Nevsky Prospect near the Moscow Railway Station in 1905. At one end of Nevsky Prospect is the Admiralty, the Winter Palace, and the Palace Square. Here is the Nevsky Prospect looking northwest toward the spire atop the Admiralty. Nevsky Prospect runs from the Admiralty and Palace Square in a straight line down to Moscow Station. After Moscow Station, Nevsky Prospect makes a slight bend and reaches the Neva River again near the Alexander Nevsky Monastery. Alexander Nevsky was the 13th century national hero who defeated the Swedish and German invading armies. The Alexander Nevsky Monastery was founded by Peter the Great in 1710 at the southern end of the Nevsky Prospect in St. Petersburg to house the relics of Alexander Nevsky the patron saint of the newly founded Russian capital. Some of the country's most celebrated artistic figures are buried in the Alexander Nevsky Monastery. After reaching the Neva, there is the Alexander Nevsky Bridge, after which the Nevsky Prospect changes name and becomes Zainvsk Prospect. The Stroganov Palace was built for the Stroganov family between 1752 and 1754. The Stroganov Palace is located here on Nevsky Prospect, just before the Kazan Cathedral. The Stroganovs were a very prominent noble family, many of whom became important political figures and notable art collectors. And it's true. The well-known beef stroganoff dish did actually come from the family's kitchen. It was in this palace in St. Petersburg that several generations of stroganoff socialized with the most notable artists, writers and composers of the day, and accumulated an extensive art collection which was later obtained by the Russian Museum. Displays of Russian icons from the Stroganov private collection are open to the public. The palace also houses an excellent exhibition of waxwork figures dedicated to the Romanov dynasty. The Kazan Cathedral is a name of several Russian churches dedicated to Our Lady of Kazan, an icon which the Russian Orthodox Church probably venerates the most. The principal of these are the Kazan Cathedral on Red Square in Moscow, 1638, 1932, and 1993, and the Kazan Cathedral on the Nevsky Prospect in St. Petersburg, 1810-1811. The construction was started in 1801 and continued for 10 years. After Napoleon invaded Russia in 1812, and the commander-in-chief, Mikhail Kutuzov, asked Our Lady of Kazan for help, the cathedral was perceived primarily as a memorial to the Russian victory against Napoleon. In 1876, the first political demonstration in Russia took place in front of the church. After the Russian Revolution of 1917, the cathedral was closed. In 1932, 
it was reopened as the Atheism Museum. Services were resumed in 1998, and four years later the cathedral was returned to the Russian Orthodox Church. Now it is the mother cathedral of the metropolis of St. Petersburg. Gostiny Dvor in St. Petersburg is not only the city's oldest and largest shopping center, but also one of the first department stores in the world. Gostiny Dvor is located here on Nevsky Prospect a short distance beyond the Kazan Cathedral. Gostiny Dvor took 28 years to construct, starting in 1757. Gosny Dvor is a historic Russian term for an indoor market or shopping center. It is translated from Russian either as guest court or merchant yard, although both translations are admittedly inadequate. Gosny Dvor housed hundreds of retail establishments and innumerable stalls. Gosny Dvor has more than 100 shops. This massive 18th century structure got a facelift recently and entered the 21st century as one of the most fashionable shopping centers in Eastern Europe. This is the Bolosolsky Belazersky Palace. The Bolosolsky Belazersky Palace is on Nevsky Prospect at the Fonica Canal. This is the Bolosolsky Belazersky Palace. This is another view of the Belosolsky Belazersky Palace. St. Petersburg is a city of canals and has been called the Venice of the North. The many canals are a result of the city being built on the marshy lowlands of the Nevar River Delta. So canals were needed to drain the soil. The Nevar River loops around central St. Petersburg and several canals cut across central city. St. Petersburg spreads over the mainland and 40 islands. It is cut by 80 river branches and canals. This is one of St. Petersburg's many canals. Because of the loop of the Nevar River and the many canals, there are also many bridges in St. Petersburg. In fact, St. Petersburg is also known as the city of 300 bridges. The bridges over the Neva open only in the early morning hours, between 1 and 4 a.m. St. Petersburg is subject to flooding from the waves on the Gulf of Finland backing into the river. This is one of the many canals in St. Petersburg. This is the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg along the Nevar River. This is along the Nevar River. Across the Neva from the Admiralty in central St. Petersburg is Vasilevsky Island, the largest of the city's islands. Two of the most famous St. Petersburg bridges, Palace Bridge, in the foreground, and Lieutenant Schmidt Bridge. Connect Vasilevsky Island with the mainland across the Balshaya Neva. The easternmost tip of Vasilevsky Island, called the Strelka, features a number of museums, including the Old Bourse, as well as the two rostral columns. It is a popular tourist attraction. Alexander Menshikov was a good friend and companion of Peter the Great. He came from a very humble background, but was quickly promoted by Peter to become the Governor General of St. Petersburg. Being the Governor General, he commissioned a large palace on Vasilevsky Island, where he lived until 1727. The Minshikov Palace was the most luxurious house to be built in the city thus far. Indeed far superior to the Summer Palace of Peter the Great, and was therefore chosen to host various official functions. St. Petersburg University was founded in 1819, and occupies a group of early 18th century buildings on the Neva embankment of Vasilevsky Island. The Empress Elizabeth ordered the construction of the Smolny Convent where she planned on spending her last days. Catherine the Great turned the Smolny convent into a finishing school for daughters of the gentry. 
the first educational establishment for women in Russia. The building for the Smolny Institute for the Education of Noble Maidens was constructed from 1806 to 1808 and is affiliated with the nearby Smolny convent. Hence the name. The young women lived and studied in the long blue buildings flanking the cathedral. As the school expanded, the neighboring yellow Smolny Institute was built to hold the overflow. The Smolny Institute and convent are here on the banks of the Neva. This is a 1947 postage stamp showing the Smolny Institute. In 1917, the Smolny Institute building was chosen by Vladimir Lenin as Bolshevik headquarters during the October Revolution. It was Lenin's residence for several months, until the national government was moved to the Moscow Kremlin. After 1991, the Smolny was used as a residence of the city mayor. Vladimir Putin worked there from 1991 to 1997. Arts Square Arts Square is one of the most impressive ensembles of St. Petersburg. It gained its modern name in 1940, and all the buildings surrounding the square are connected to arts. St. Petersburg is one of the great cultural centers of Europe and has been home to many of Russia's greatest writers and composers. Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky is perhaps Russia's greatest composer. Tchaikovsky studied law in St. Petersburg, worked a civil servant, and then studied music at the St. Petersburg Conservatory of Music from 1863 to 1865. Fyodor Mihailovich Dostoevsky was one of the greatest of Russian writers, whose works have had a lasting effect on 20th century fiction. He was a Russian novelist, short story writer and essayist. His most memorable works include Crime and Punishment, the Idiot, in the Brothers Karamazov. Fyodor Dostoevsky was born in Moscow in 1821 and died in St. Petersburg in 1881. Nikolai Gogol was a Ukrainian-born Russian dramatist, novelist and short story writer. Maxim Gorky was a Russian and Soviet writer and a political activist. Ivan Sergeyevich Turgenev was a Russian novelist, short story writer, and playwright. His novel Fathers and Sons, 1862, is regarded as one of the major works of 19th century fiction. Dmitry Shostakovich was a Soviet Russian composer and pianist and a prominent figure of 20th century music. Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov was a Russian composer, and a was a master of orchestration. His best known orchestral compositions are Capriccio Espanol, the Russian Easter Festival Overture, and Shahrazada. Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin was a Russian Romantic author considered to be the greatest Russian poet and the founder of modern Russian literature. Art Square is a few blocks northeast of Nevsky Prospect. This is Art Square with statue of Alexander Pushkin. The Mariinsky Theater is a historic theater of opera and ballet. It was formerly known as the Kirov Opera and Ballet Theater from 1935 to 1992, and as the National Academy of Opera and Ballet, from 1920 to 1935. The Mariinsky Theater and Theater Square are located here a few blocks south of the Neva. The Imperial Mariinsky Theater and its predecessor, the Bolshoi Kameny Theater, hosted premieres of all the operas by Glinka. Mussorgsky and Tchaikovsky. This is the Bolshoi Kamny Theater and Theater Square in 1806. The Russian Museum has one of the country's two largest collections of Russian art. The State Russian Museum 
formerly the Russian Museum of His Imperial Majesty Alexander III, is the largest depository of the Russian fine art in St. Petersburg. The Russian Museum is located here, a few blocks northeast of Nevsky Prospect. The center of the ensemble of the buildings surrounding Artist Square in the main building of the Russian Museum is the neoclassical Mykhailovsky Palace. The Mykhailovsky Palace was designed by architect Carlo Rossi and built from 1819 to 1825 as the residence of Grand Duke Mikhail Pavlovich brother of emperors Alexander I and Nicholas I. The Mali Opera and Ballet Theatre is also known as the Mussorgsky Theatre. The Mali Theatre is often referred to as the city's second fiddle to the Marinsky for opera and ballet. The Mali Theatre is nevertheless a well-respected and centrally located theatre. The large concert hall, Bolshoi Al of the St. Petersburg Philharmonia is the city's prime classical music venue. The Russian Ethnography Museum represents all of the ethnic cultures of the former USSR. The Russian Ethnography Museum provides insights into the history and culture of Russians, Ukrainians and Belarusians, as well as the peoples and tribes of the Caucasus, Central Asia, in Siberia. Alexandrinsky Theater is the oldest professional theater in Russia. Its history goes back to 1756 when the Empress Elizabeth founded it as a court theater for comedy and tragedy performances. The theater was named by the Emperor Nicholas I after his wife, Alexandra Fyodorovna. The building was constructed in the Ostrovsky Square from 1828 to 1832. Up to the present day, the Alexandrinsky Theater is one of the most prestigious stages of dramatic art in Russia. The Elizabeth Anichkov Palace is on the corner of the Fontanko Canal and Nevsky Prospect. This palace passed through a series of imperial hands before Alexander II presented it to his son Alexander III on his wedding day. The Anichkov Palace is on Nevsky Prospect at the Fontanka Canal. In 1936, everything in the Anichkov Palace was given away to other museums throughout Russia. It is now called the Palace of Youth Creativity. The Mikhailovsky, or Engineer's, Castle, was constructed for Emperor Paul in 1797-1801, to, to replace the earlier Summer Palace. The Engineer's Castle is along the Fontanka Canal, above the Anichkov Bridge. Later the castle was used for the Army Engineer's School and became known as the Engineer's Castle. Engineer's Castle is now a branch of the Russian Museum with portraits of Russian rulers on display. This is the Mikhailovsky, or Engineer's Castle. This is another view of the Mikhailovsky, or Engineer's Castle. The Trinity Cathedral was built for the Izmailovsky Regiment of Imperial Guards in 1835. The Trinity Cathedral can accommodate up to 3,000 visitors and has only recently begun to be restored to its pre-revolutionary splendor after years of neglect. In 1938 the Trinity Cathedral was closed, but in 1990 it was returned to the Russian Orthodox Church. The St. Petersburg exhibits many typical Soviet designs and features vivid decorations and artwork. This is a map of the St. Petersburg metro system. Due to the city's unique geology, the St. Petersburg metro is also one of the deepest metro systems in the world. This is looking way down into the depths of the subway. The climate of St. Petersburg the effect of the Baltic Sea provides St. Petersburg with a milder climate than might be expected for its far northern site. Nevertheless, 
Winters are rather cold. Here are average monthly temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in St. Petersburg. In June the average highs are in the rather cool mid-60s. The temperature will drop down to around 50 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Here are average monthly temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in St. Petersburg. We see that the temperatures stay below freezing. 0 degrees Celsius. For most of the winter months in June the average highs will be around 17 degrees Celsius. Overnight the temperature will drop down to around 10 degrees Celsius. So again that will be rather chilly. The winter high temperatures in January are in the 24 degrees Fahrenheit range. And the lows go down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. The Nevar River is frozen in these winter months. From about November through March. Icebreakers are used to keep the port open in the winter. The summertime high temperatures go up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in July. And the lows go down to a somewhat chilly 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Although St. Petersburg is almost 400 miles or 640 kilometers north of Moscow. Its climate is tempered by exposure to the Baltic Sea and even to some extent the Gulf Stream. As a result, the winters are not quite as severe as in Moscow, and the summers are a bit cooler. Rainfall and Snow Here is average monthly precipitation in inches throughout the year in St. Petersburg together with the yearly total. Here is average monthly precipitation in centimeters throughout the year in St. Petersburg together with the yearly total. We see that the rainy season is the summer and early fall months of June through October, with the rainiest month being August. Russian money This is a 100 ruble Russian banknote. 100 Russian rubles equals 1.58 US dollars. 1 US dollar equals 63 Russian rubles. The Russian alphabet. The Russian alphabet is also known as the Cyrillic alphabet. While learning Russian can be a long and arduous task. It is worthwhile to spend a little bit of time to learn the Russian alphabet. That way, you can read street signs and various other signs, menu items, etc. Here are the first nine letters of the Russian alphabet. Note that what looks like the letter B is pronounced like a V. As in vine. This gives the sound of the English letter B. As in bit or boy. This is similar to the Greek letter gamma, giving a G sound. As in go. This is similar to the Greek letter delta, giving a D sound as in do. This gives the sound of the English letter E, but with a Y in front. As in yet. An example is the Russian word for no, pronounced as nigh at. This again gives the sound of the English letter E, with a Y in front, but now pronounced as in the word yoke. This gives the sound of the English letter S, as in the word pleasure. This gives the sound of the English letter Z, as in the word zoo. Here are the next 14 letters of the Russian alphabet. Note that what looks like the letter N written backwards is pronounced like a E, as in C. This gives the sound of the English letter Y, as in the word boy. This is similar to the Greek letter lambda, giving an L sound, as in lamp. Note that what looks like the letter H, is actually pronounced like an N, as in not. This is similar to the Greek letter pi, giving a P sound. As in pet. Note that what looks like the letter P is actually similar to the Greek rho, 
and pronounced like an R, as in roll. The letter C is always pronounced like the English soft C, as in C. Note that what looks like the letter Y, is actually pronounced like a double O, as in boot. This is similar to the Greek letter Phi, giving an F, sound as in face. What looks like the letter Y, is pronounced like a hard or guttural H, as in lock. Here are the last ten letters of the Russian alphabet. This strange looking letter is pronounced like TS, as in sits. This letter is pronounced like CH, as in chip. This strange looking letter is pronounced like SH, as in shut. This strange looking letter is also pronounced like SH as in sheep. This letter that sort of looks like a backwards Z, or a backwards Greek epsilon, is pronounced like E, as in meat. This strange looking letter that looks like a combination of I know, is pronounced like a U, as in use. This letter that looks like a backwards R, is pronounced like Y, as in yard. Here's an example of two words in English and Russian. Russian phrases, thanks. Russian phrases, greetings. Russian phrases, greetings. Russian phrases, saying goodbye. Russian phrases, speaking. Russian phrases, speaking. Russian phrases, apologies. Table of contents.